Don't do it. Come on, don't blame Pluto for pointing at your ego's need to be in control. Hello, Ralph McIntyre with Astro Map Links. Well, I'm here to do another video. My Pluto people, come on in. We're going to dive deep into some Pluto material today. So, interestingly enough, everyone likes to pick on my best friend Pluto and blame all of their troubles on this beautiful little planet in the sky. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it, please. We're going to talk about the notorious Pluto Astro Cartography line. Oh my God, you should all fear it. No, 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 please don't fear it. So we're going to dive deep into this subject. Hopefully this video won't go too long and hopefully I'll be able to keep it coherent to where people can follow me. So astro cartography line, the Pluto line, the subject of this video, and I think I'm going to do a series on this, and it's how to thrive on a Pluto line. How to enjoy life on a Pluto line. So, we're going to start out with a little bit about Pluto. Then we're going to get into astrocartography. And then we're going to get it deep into understanding how to thrive. So, Pluto, in my opinion, is the great liberator of the birth chart. If you think about... So, to understand where I'm coming from, you have to understand one concept. We're a soul here to evolve. We're a soul hearing to let go of our ego's attachment to just this physical world and realize that there's so much more going on. So if you believe that, you'll understand where I'm coming from and how I explain astrology. And astrology is here to help liberate you. It's all your friend. There is no such thing as a bad placement from this perspective. Now, from the ego perspective, from holding on to this earthly need to be in control, this earthly plane as the only existence, holding on to this life as the only existence, yeah, then there is a lot of things about astrology you should fear. But from a soul perspective, there's nothing about astrology that you need to fear whatsoever. It's all here to help liberate you from your ego. And Pluto, my friend Pluto, is the best at this. That's part of the reason why it gets such a bad rap in most astrologers and most people, especially in astrocartography. So Pluto is the ability to see into the dark. Now, if you think about it, when a light shines in the dark, it reflects all the things, or excuse me, when a light shines into the dark, you see all the things that reflect light. Now, Pluto allows you to see in the dark. It allows you to see all the things that don't reflect light, all of the hidden things that aren't necessarily of this earthly plane, especially around the subconscious karmic patterns that are holding you back because Pluto wants you to be the greatest you possible. It's that friend that's willing to tell you something difficult to help liberate you. So, astrocartography, the Pluto line, depending on where you live on the world, you might be living on that notorious Pluto line. So, most people miss this about astrocartography. To understand the Pluto line in astrocartography. We need to understand Pluto in the chart. So I'm doing this video for a, a very good friend, client of mine, wanted me to talk about this particular subject. And so I'm going to use her chart to talk about it. Now, in this series, I'm going to be open for people leaving comments and asking me about their own Pluto, telling me where it is, the rulers, all the different, as much information as you can give me on your own Pluto. I will try to do videos on people's Pluto, Pluto lines, and how to thrive on a Pluto line. So in this particular case, we have Pluto conjunct the North Node in the 10th house in Libra. That means the south node is in Aries in the fourth house. 
So we're talking about the 10th, 4th aspect. And we're also talking about Libra, which is a very relationship-oriented. Libra is the need to balance the needs of self and the needs of others. Versus that south node in Aries is all about needing to put your needs first. And so to really deeply understand any planet, you want to look at some of the other factors. So Libra, ruled by Venus. So this particular Venus is in Cancer in the seventh house, conjunct Jupiter. So once again, we have Libra, we have the seventh house, we have Venus, we have Cancer. There's a lot of relationship-oriented aspects that we're going to jump into to really understand this Pluto and to understand the Pluto line. Remember, to understand the map, it's not just a generic Pluto line. It's your Pluto in your chart manifest on the Earth. So to understand any astrocartography line, you need to understand your birth chart deeply. The more deeply you understand what the birth chart is asking of you, the easier it is to understand that astrocartography line. So we want to thrive on a Pluto line. That means we need to work with Pluto. We need to kind of surrender to Pluto, so to speak. Surrender to the fact that we know that the tension in our life isn't caused by the planet. Let me say that again. We know that the tension in our life isn't caused by the planet. It's caused by the ego's need to be in control and the karmic bad habits, so to speak. Not to say that there's any good or bad, but it's like the karmic habits of like, oh, I've survived this, I can do this again. Even though it may have been kind of not a very good surviving, you know, and that's a lot of what we're talking about, especially with Pluto. So Libra, the balance of needs of self and others. Well, there's a real easy way to make that happen. It's really simple. Have no needs. <laughs> and so if we jump back to the fact that Pluto's conjunct the North Node, and the North Node is where the soul's going from, too, and the south node is all the habits, the bad habits that the soul is trying to let go of. So the south node in the fourth house. Well, the fourth house is how and where you nurture yourself. The south node in Aries means that there's a lot of trauma around nurturing self. You know, it doesn't take very far back in history, especially if you keep the person as a female, to know that so many people have had their whole lives controlled by others. They are here to nurture others. They are here to not have any needs. You know, the traditional role of mother, you know, sacrifice self for the good of the family, for the good of the kids. So on some levels, that's a lot of what we're talking about. You know, and then the other aspect about this fourth house is, home and family, how you nurture yourself, how you take care of yourself, versus the 10th house is being out in the public, needing to be make, you know, a mark out in the world. The 10th house is where people who don't know you see you. It's like my interaction with all of you is from the 10th house. You don't know me from a personal, you just know my persona that I put out. And so to have Pluto out in the 10th house means that all this, so to speak, under the cover stuff is out in the 10th house. This need to balance the needs of self and others. You know, where your Pluto is, it's like where you have your superpower. So all those folks with Pluto and Libra have this ability to see into the underpinnings of getting along with each other, you know, and that permeability of the getting along you know it's like on some levels pluto and libra it's like there is no boundaries between us if i'm having a hard time and you know me you're having a hard time it's really hard to kind of keep all of that separate it's really hard to know what's me and what's you especially with pluto and libra in the 10th house conjunct your north node 
which is kind of like where you're learning, where you're, so to speak, the most ignorant. It's like the maturity is going to be a big friend for you. So I want to jump over to the Venus, Jupiter, in the seventh house in Cancer. Because on some levels, this is all talking the same thing. And so the need to take care of yourself, the need to nurture yourself in relationship. Now, this is a challenge because the easy way to, so to speak, be safe in a relationship is to have no needs, you know? Now, there's a difference between being safe and nurturing yourself. And so this Pluto and Libra in the 10th house, this Venus and Cancer, Jupiter in the 7th house, in my opinion, are saying the same thing. This need to, so to speak, have needs in relationship. Get what you need out of the relationship. Not sacrificing your needs always to make the relationship work. It's also a very relationship-oriented chart with the ruler of the North Node in the seventh house. And then furthermore, that Mars that rules the South Node is in the eighth house in Leo. Now, I could probably do a whole video on that Mars and Leo in the 8th house, especially related to that Pluto, because the 8th house is Pluto's house. The 8th house is Mars's house. You know, Mars being its own house in the sign of Leo is a big part of what this chart is talking about. This need to be seen. And the interesting thing about the need to be seen is it's really easy to be seen in a way that's shocking, you know, to others. It's very difficult to be seen in a way that's profound. And the difference is, is who you're being seen by. And so it's really easy to be seen, so to speak, by the wrong people that don't get you, that kind of persecute you, because that's the karmic pattern here. You know, that Aries in the fourth house, it's kind of like, I know how to survive when being persecuted. I know how to survive that. This concept of, wait a minute, what if I never shared myself with anyone that didn't worship it? Let me say that again. What if I didn't share myself with anything that didn't worship it? <laughs> so it's like on some levels, that's what this Pluto's wanting. It's like, hey, can you be out in the world in a way that's good for you? And so I want to dive back over to that Mars. Because the eighth house and Pluto have a lot in common, and that's this boundarylessness existence. Meaning, when we get in the 3D, we think that these bodies have boundaries. I'm here, you're there, you know. I close my door, I don't see you, I don't feel you. From the 8th house perspective, from the Pluto's perspective, from the 5th dimensional perspective, from the soul purpose perspective, that's all illusion. It's like there is no boundaries between us. If I feel something, other people can sense it, people that are close. When I walk up to someone, I can read them, I can sense them. You know, it's funny, I feel it when people get on my YouTube channel. When people are loving my videos, I can actually feel new people coming in. This whole idea of boundaries from the 8th house perspective is an illusion. And so, this is where it gets complicated. This is where that Pluto's here to help you. That Pluto's shine in the light, wanting to light up that ego's attachment of self-sacrificing, of putting other people's needs above yours. So with that big Pluto placement, with that big Venus-Mars placement, your ability to see and sense other people's needs are almost going to be stronger than yours. And so, so much of what you perceive is other people's needs. And so, let me start this back again. So, the Pluto's in Libra in the 10th house, the need to balance the needs of self and others. But if you sense other people's needs deeper than you sense your own, where the balance point is, 
will be the tricky part in this. And so to understand that, we have to kind of think about it from the perspective of where true balance is and where you perceive balance is. So if this is true balance, on this side, I'm taking care of other people. And in this side, I'm just taking care of myself. But if you perceive it way over here, that means for you to get to true balance, you have to feel, emphasis on the word feel, ridiculously selfish. And so on some levels, my suggestion as a practice is to, you know, feel selfish. Do things that are kind of moving you towards putting your needs first, you know. And realize that, and this is where it gets really tricky, because we can get so caught up in this physical form as us, and the only thing about us. And this life, is it's all about this life. But in reality, there's so much more to who we are than this physical reality. So anything that happens in this physical reality is only a small portion of our reality. And so it's like, if you're uncomfortable for a second, would your whole life be uncomfortable? On some of us, that's what we're talking about. You think about this particular life, this physical reality you're in right now, this body you're in. If it represents just one second of your existence, be like, oh, wait a minute. So half my life, this life, I'm unhappy. So that's a half a second of my existence. Would that mean I'm unhappy? And so the more you can step back and realize, it's like, oh. And then the other aspect that I want to say is that we're all playing a role in the collective. If you think about every person on the planet, everything that's ever happened on the planet as a role in a movie and realize from the soul perspective, we played every role. Let me say that again. From the soul perspective, we've played every role. And part of what we're doing is integrating all the things that we did or that happened to us and stepping back and realizing that this physical form isn't us. It's like an avatar. And this is where Pluto kind of really, this is Pluto realm. This is the eighth house realm. Like I said to all my Pluto people, we are going to dive into it today. Hopefully I'm making sense here. So thriving on a Pluto line. The trick to thriving on a Pluto line is to integrate all of this. One of it is, is to realize what the word thrive means. From a Pluto perspective, thrive is slightly different. And especially with that Mars in Leo in the eighth house. We're talking about a soul that needs to bear the most sensitive part of themselves out in the world. Now, in my opinion, to understand Leo is audience selection. You know, if you choose the right audience, Leo's a good thing. If you choose the wrong audience, Leo's a bad thing. And so from an eighth house perspective, you know, it's so easy to, so to speak, be seen by saying things that are shocking. You know, it's really hard to be seen by saying things that are profound to the right people not wasting your time with the wrong people. If they don't see what you have to offer as profound, they are inherently the wrong audience. And the other thing about Pluto, the other thing about Leo, the other thing about the eighth house is this inability to see self. It's interesting. I don't have anything Leo in my chart, but my progress chart is all Leo. My Mercury and Sun are up in the 11th house in Leo. And it was funny because once it hit Leo, I started doing YouTube videos. And it's interesting because my perception of myself is so different than your perception of me. It's like people look at my videos and they're like, wow, so whatever, da, da, da. And I'm like, who are you listening to? 
Because from my perspective, it's just me. I'm like in here, you know, dancing around in my own thoughts just like you are. And so by putting yourself in the person in front of someone who's capable of seeing you and someone who's capable of pointing at the profoundness in you will help you start to see yourself. So with that Leo and Mars, you know, where Mars sits, you need courage. You need the courage, you know, and eighth house Pluto stuff, you know, it is the definition of the need of courage. If you want to be scared, dive into Pluto. You want to be scared, dive into Scorpio. All the ugliness, all the unseen aspects of this earthly existence. And so having that Pluto in the 10th house means you need to kind of step out into the public view. You know, but here's my suggestion. Here's the key to thriving with this Pluto. Audience selection. You can dive out in the public, not the public as a whole. You're not for everyone. Most people won't get you. And the more you can really understand that, the more you can protect this valuable information that's coming through your Pluto and your Mars and only sharing it with people that see it as profound, that worship it as the divine coming through you the better off you're going to be. And then also to remember, because this is tied into your nodes, that south node, that karmic bad habit of kind of speaking up in front of the wrong people, kind of putting a spotlight on you from a point of view of persecution. Because whenever you're persecuted, there's so much energy directed at you, and you're, you're protecting it yourself from it. And so then you can't hear the subtle divine message that wants to come through you. So if you only share yourself with the right people, and the right people are going to say things like, wow, that's so profound. Thank you so much for sharing. The right people are going to understand how fragile you are and not put, your, put you in front of harsh energy. So that's my recommendation on this particular Pluto, Pluto line. Now, depending on where your Pluto is in your chart, all the different aspects, it's going to be very much different on how you need to interact with the Pluto to thrive. So remember, if you're not thriving on a Pluto line, don't blame Pluto. Please. You haven't heard anything from this channel. Pluto's your friend, always has been, always will be. Pluto's here to help you get free of your ego's attachment. It's help you get free of your karmic attachments. This is so much of what I do in my readings is I dive deep. I help people unpack all the little subtle nuances of these energies that are affecting you, these habits that are no longer ser serving you. And the fact that we're here talking, the fact that I'm doing this video, you know, is it's time for you to really have a different relationship with your own inner wisdom and who you share it with. So the more you protect it, the more you don't share it with people who aren't worthy of it, the better off you're going to be. All right. Thank you so much. I apologize. This video probably went a little long. Anyways, have a spectacular day.